Cheryl comes from a family of architects who descended from Moses McKissick, brought to this country as a slave in 1790 and sold to a master builder. Cheryl represents the fifth generation of the McKissick family's century-old business. McKissick and McKissick, the oldest minority and woman-owned professional design and construction firm in the nation. Cheryl has built her business by fostering relationships and providing innovative solutions to complex projects. I have learned many lessons in my life, but one lesson that I have learned very well, and that is the road to success is always under construction. Life is full of changes, challenges, and choices. The more challenges, the more changes, the more strategies we will need to face the challenge. And our experience and our exposure will help make our choices better. When my great-great-grandfather Moses I was kidnapped in West Africa and sold into slavery to one of America's first contractors, William McKissick of Charlotte, North Carolina, Moses learned his trade from his slave owner and was freed, and his slave owner actually supported his independence as a craftsman. Moses I took advantage of every opportunity he was given. He was driven by what he did have, not by what he didn't have. So he was able to overcome major roadblocks, bigotry, hatred, poverty, to establish a business in a very hostile environment. When I look at Moses, he taught me that success is not achieved during the ex extraordinary, but rather doing the ordinary extraordinarily well. In 1905, my grandfather, Moses McKissick III, stressed the lessons of skill and performance. Performance is a part of everything we do. Know what you know and know it well. And what you don't know, learn it, don't defend it, don't make excuses for it, not knowing. Stand for a commitment to changing the ethnic and gender composition of the decision makers. The decision makers must look like us. Stand for women and minorities businesses moving up the ladder to position themselves for profitable contracts. Stand for access to resources that block opportunities. Stand up and reach out and communicate and network to women with women in construction by attending the seminar you're attending today, by joining the Women Builders and WIP and other women organizations. Also, stand up as a mentor to inspire the next gener generation. Listen to the voice with a purpose of those who led the way during my family line. And was anybody listening to some joiner truth, a former slave? Because here is what she said. If the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, these women together ought to be able to come back together and turn the world upside right again. White, black, rich, poor, women, male, we share the same season and purpose. Who will you be a legacy for? Your twin set off on her own in 1990, I believe, and I figure there's got to be a backstory to that. By twin sister and I both started our own individual businesses. I started the McKissick Group in 1990 and she started wow. McKissick and McKissick of Washington um, in 1990. On the other hand, I decided I wanted to go back and buy my mother's firm, mm -hmm. uh, which I did in 1999. Um, and therein lies the two differences of our companies. We operate in two different locations, um, and we have two different types of businesses, really. Or she's more in design and engineering, and I'm purely construction. So uh, do you ever collaborate? We work together closely. I think the industry a lot of times thinks that we do not, um, but we make sure that we are in close communications. We collaborate on 
large construction firms. Yeah. We do have um, a strategic alliance where mm. we pursue work nationally together. Uh -huh. um, and my hope, um, I don't know if she feels the same way, is that one day we merge. Uh, but, you know, firms of your size, successful firms in the mid sectors, I would think there's people knocking on your door. My mother um, had to take over the business when my father became ill. He had a massive heart attack. Um, mm -hmm. And so the very next week, she received phone calls from people in Nashville, leaders in the architecture and construction business, saying, well, you're a woman. You can't handle this business. You need to sell. And she said, I am keeping this business for my daughters. And <laughs> <laughs> so then as I evolved and began to think about it, um, yes, initially you think, oh, it might be nice to have that as an exit strategy until you start thinking about the stories, the blood, sweat, and tears mm -hmm. to keep a business going for 200 years. Um, mm -hmm. So at this point, I have to say, I have no plans, no plans mm -hmm. to sell this business. Obviously, it's still a male-dominated industry, but what advice do you have to, to, you know, for, for those in the industry? When my business associates started this organization probably five or six years ago, I think it's five years, it was centered around women-owned businesses in construction. We've opened it up to C-suite professionals in the very large construction firms. And so, yes, you know, it's, it's not a lot of women in our business. However, I, I do believe that it's changing. I think when you look at the engineering schools, the architecture schools, you see a whole lot more women. It's just not enough people, period, coming into our profession. But I would say a lot of them are women, so that hmm. excites me. We have got to get women in prominent places. So what would be your advice, you know, entry-level women, mid-career women, and successful women business owners? If you see yourself different, then you won't walk up to a person and, or a man or whatever stereotypical client you think that you have out there and say, I need a contract. I'm qualified, you know, you just won't do it. Um, and so it's how you see yourself first. Um, then you have to have a strategy. I mean, strategy is key. Um, and you know, some people think that's operational efficiency and, and things like that. For me, no, it is how are you going to grow the business? Where is the market share? That is a strategy. When I'm at work, I'm at work. So whatever time frame that is, I will take a 30 second call from my kids if they have a question, as long as it's not an emergency. But when I get home, I am at home. I give my undivided attention to my family. So you gotta find that balance. When you wake up in the morning and, and you just don't feel right, just cease and desist. Don't do it that day. People, <laughs> <laughs> just don't do it that day. What I'd like to know is, as a woman-owned company, knowing that women are an untapped resource and that there is a need for more women in the industry, what exactly are some of the workforce development initiatives that you've implemented within your organization to attract more women? We have a workforce initiative happening in Harlem that we started in 2005, really to put that community to work, and several of them have been women. In my own organization, um, I made sure that I had two strong female board members. It's, it's important to bring in women because women will bring in other women. The other thing are, is networking. Um, the women builders I know intimately because I'm the president. But we have a lot of networking events which allow women to meet one another. For someone who's coming out from a comfortable position where they're working for a large company, to take that step, what is it that you would advise? You have to be really confident in yourself that you can deal with that struggle. You have to be able to take some hard times uh, and have 
faith that you will be able to overcome it. Make sure you know how to get that first contract. It always amazes me how people step out and start their own business, but they don't have any business. It's paramount. You have to have a contract to get started.